My name is Ralph Kiner. I've got a secret. Do you think you can guess what it is? Prom. Prom Home Permanent. The new easy home permanent that needs no neutralizer and white rain. The fabulous new lotion shampoo that leaves your hair sunshine bright. Present, I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. Hi. Thank you. Thank you very much, my friends, and greetings again to you out there. This is Gary Moore. I had, um, I had three jokes prepared. I was going to choose one of them to open the show with, and I've been reading them over backstage, and now I kind of lost faith in all three of them. So will you do me a favor, audience, will you just laugh anyhow? Everybody laugh, come on, huh? <laughs> the bigger laugh than we would have gotten if I had a joke. Why did we bother? Thank you, you're very kind. In any event, welcome, my friends, to I've Got a Secret. I've Got a Secret in which we bring you the awful truth about some very nice people just for fun. Now, tonight we have some information about their private lives, which they're going to try to keep secret from our inquisitive panel. Now, I would like very much for you to meet our panel. First, a young man who is MC of his own quiz show, Winner Take All, Mr. Bill Cullen, then the lovely motion picture and television actress, Miss Jane Meadows, Britain's unofficial ambassador of befuddlement, Mr. Melville Cooper, and our bright star of movies and television, Miss Lorraine Day. That is our panel. All right, panel, are we all set to play I've Got a Secret? All right, here we go. Let's meet, then, our first contestant of the evening. Will you come in, you delightful young lady? <laughs> okay, all right. How are you? Sit right down there. Let's move just a little closer, honey. You look like a snowdrop on a hot evening. Very pretty indeed. This young lady's name is Dottie Ann, panel. Now, it is up to you to uncover Dottie Ann's secret, and here is how we play the game. Each panelist will get two questioning periods of 15 seconds each, but the clock will only time the actual questions. Now, when a panelist's time is up, you will hear this rather revolting sound. And I will pay our guest $10 and then turn the game over to the next questioner. Twice around the panel for a total loss of $80, and the game is over. Now then, Dottie Ann, if you will hold your hand over your mouth so that the panel, sneaky as they are, can see, and if you will whisper your secret to me, we will reveal it to the viewers at home. What is your secret? The applause only serves to confuse the panel more. Good for you. <laughs> now, to help classify this secret panel, I will tell you that it begins with the word my, and it takes place in the present. Now then, we will start our questioning with our guest, Miss Lorraine Day. Miss Day? Thank you. Uh, Dottie Ann, this my, is, uh, is this my uh, a person? Yes. <laughs> is it, is it uh, um, a relative? Yes. Blood kin? Yes. Uh, father? No. Mother? No. Uh, <laughs> grandfather? Yes. Is your grandfather somebody famous? Yes. He is famous. Oh, your time is up, Miss Day. You did very well. However, you got off to a flying start. There's $10 for you, Dottie Ann, and you have 70 more to go. Bill Cullen. Dottie Ann, I'm interested to know what, uh, who your grandfather is. Is that correct? Uh, my grandfather is so-and-so. That's her secret, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, do we all know your grandfather, Dottie Ann? Well... Uh, should we all know him? Oh, yes. Is he in, is he in the, the theater, by any chance, the arts? No. Politics? Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh. I don't know what, how Dottie Ann... Well, what would you say it is, Dottie Ann? Maybe she doesn't want to admit it. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this is something she has every right to be proud of. Well, what would you say? Don't you think it's politics? Yeah, I think so. What is it these days? Uh, she says slightly politics. Slightly politics. Was your grandfather elected to whatever he does, Dottie Ann? Yes. Uh, is he a Democrat? Yes. Is he an official of this city? 
Bye. We'll have to answer that question. The answer is no, he is not an official of this city. There's $20 for you, Dottie Ann, and 60 more to go. Miss Meadows. Dottie Ann, does your grandfather hold this position now, or did he hold it? He did hold it. He did hold it. And he no. holds it now. Well, he does hold it now. Unless you have some late information that I have. <laughs> And it, did your grandfather figure in the recent um, primaries or whatever you call them in Chicago? The convention, convention? in Chicago? Yes, yes. He, he figured. He did? Was he elected to some uh, position in Chicago? No. no. Has your grandfather been in Washington? Yes. He has been in Washington? Almost everybody at the convention has been in, wa in Washington. There is $30 down and $50 to go, Mr. Melville Cooper. Well, this is out of my field a little, you know, but uh, <laughs> I'm wondering, Dr. Ann, is your grandfather uh, holds a very high position in the Democratic government? Almost very high? I mean, it's almost, almost high very high. high. It's very high. <laughs> He's not vice president, by any chance. Yes. Well, now, just a moment. Just a moment. You said he is not vice president. I said, well, I said by any chance. I was putting it politely. In other words, <laughs> Mr. Barclay. That is right. Dottie Ann is the granddaughter of Vice President Barclay. <laughs> and you will never guess what her last name is. Barclay? No. no. Yes. Isn't that clever? Now <laughs> then. I thought the two folks out there might like to meet another member of the family, our very cute little brother and the namesake. Here is Alvin Barkley II. Look at that. Hello, Alvin. Hello, Alvin. Alvin, come here. Alvin, you are not a contestant on the show, but I hate to see your sister walk off with $30 and you not have $10 from the makers of Prom Home Permanent just for, for last, huh? <laughs> All right, you didn't do anything, but we want you to have $10 then. Thank you. Excuse me, what's in there? That's girl. What? Why are you out there? I don't know. Hope the boss doesn't try to collect that $10 back from me, because I ain't got it. <laughs> Finally, you did very well on that first go-round. Let's see if we can get something out of this next young gentleman here, our second guest. How do you do, sir? Will you pull up a real... <coughs> that's real tight to the microphone. What is your name, please, sir? Harry Fox. Harry Fox. All right, you have a secret for our panel to uncover, right? That's right. Well, now, panel, remember how we play twice around the panel, and you have lost the game. Now, Mr. Fox, please remind me of your secret. At the same time, we will let our home audience know exactly what it is. That's even harder than vice president. Okay. <laughs> now, to help classify this secret panel, I will tell you that it begins with the word I and concerns the future. Now, here we go. We'll start the cross-examination over with Mr. Bill Cullen. Is this uh, I and concerns the future? Is this going to happen to you within the next 10 years, Mr. Fox? <laughs> no, it won't. It won't no. happen within the next it 10 years? It won't happen to me. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, it will. Yes. Nice, clear answers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it better it'll happen within the next next ten years, unless he's got a whole new system figured out. Basically. Is this something that somebody is going to do to you, Mr. Fox? That's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this boy has got a new system. Well, <laughs> 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 Is this, uh, I, I, uh, may I say this? I don't think that in the sense that you asked the question, Mr. Cullen, we can say it was something that was going to be done to him. Uh, could it be done? Could it possibly uh, be something someone's going to do for him? <laughs> I think that's a happier way of phrasing it. Yes, that's a happier phrase. Is, is more than one person going to do this for you, Mr. Fox? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no. Is this, a, is this a happy thing that's going to happen to you? Yes. Did you have to work to accomplish this? <laughs> I'd like to go home right now. 
I was going to rephrase it and ask it if his grandfather was a Republican. <laughs> Uh, did this require, uh, you, we mentioned work, did this require uh, white collar work as opposed to white <laughs> I would, I would, you say white collar work as opposed to labor, I would say this is labor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Cullen, there's $10 down and $70 to go. Oh, Miss Meadows. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Mr. Fox, would it help me to know something about this person? Would that help me get closer to your secret? That's right. Uh, is this person, by any chance, a woman? Yes. It is. I don't think it's by chance. It, it is. is. It is a woman. Yeah. Is this person a member of your family? Yes. Is it your mother? No. Nope. Is it your wife? Are you married? Yes. It is your wife. Something in the future. Is it, uh... Oh, is no. Is your wife expecting a baby? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, what I want to see is if Mr. Cullen has the courage to remain on the path <laughs> throughout the evening. It seems a shame, Mr. Fox, that $10 is all you can get at this crucial moment, but thanks very much for making us a proud of home permanent. You've been just great. Come on around here. <laughs> I got a secret I wish I were dead. <laughs> oh. It's time to have our panel go to work on tonight's special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, the very handsome young man who has led both major leagues in home run hitting for the last five years, Mr. Ralph Kiner of the Pittsburgh Pirates. You managed to look very happy after the rather unhappy events of the day, Ralph. Well, let's not talk about it. I think Lorraine's got a few troubles of her own over there, too, though. <laughs> yes, I think the two of you... Smiling, but I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ralph, let's have our uh, panel start digging for your secret in just... All right, panel. Now let's go to work and try to dig out Mr. Ralph Kiner's secret. We will play the game the same as before, except that, of course, in this case, the money will go to Mr. Kiner's favorite charity. Ralph, will you whisper your secret to me, please, while we reveal it on the screens at home? <laughs> I want to tell you, you stuck your neck out tonight. Well, to classify this secret for you, panel, I will tell you that it begins with the word I, and it is something that Ralph Kiner is doing right now. Let's start the cross examination with Mr. Melville Cooper. Mr. Kiner, something you're doing right now? Yes, sir. At this moment? Right at this moment. Right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, would you mind doing it again? <laughs> right, I have. <laughs> I just have. He just did it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's very subtle, Mr. Kiner, very subtle, very clever. <laughs> yeah. Something you're doing right now, which you're not doing, it appears that you're not, it appears that it, it looks as if it might be possible that it would be that, uh, of course, it can't be. <laughs> I understand entirely, yes, I know. Uh, well, is it uh, something you're thinking? Well, I'm thinking about it, yes, I am. So but that is not the secret, though. Not the not secret. He is thinking about it, but that's not the secret. Something you're wearing. There's a chance. There's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to give you a, 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 an un unequivocal yes on that. It is something he's wearing. Ten dollars to you, Ralph Kiner. Seventy dollars to go. Miss Lorraine Day. This is Leo DeRoche. Ralph, if, if it's something that you're wearing, it must be the tie because it doesn't go with the suit. <laughs> and you have been selected. Well, as let's a, not be critical of Mr. Kiner's wardrobe. Yes, but Mr. Kiner has been selected as the best dressed young man many times well, by many blue, polls. Uh, there's some so blue I would in the say tie. that it has something to do with the tie. Is it like a tie that my husband has? I don't know what your husband wears outside of a baseball uniform. <laughs> <laughs> is it my husband's tie? That is exactly it. Is it my husband's tie? Yeah. 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 Ralph, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did he give that tie to you? Uh, did he give oh, <laughs> that? Uh, did, my, did my husband give you that tie? 
Uh, indirectly, he did, yes. Why, that's so and so. I gave it to him. Oh. <laughs> Wait till I get home. <laughs> Let me ask you one question. Did you did you rec recognize the tie? Because wives are always complaining the husbands don't rec don't uh, pay attention to their wives' clothes. Did you recognize the tie, or was it just because it seemed to jar somewhat with Mr. Kiner's outfit? Well, I thought it jarred with the Mr. Kiner's outfit when I saw him come in. And the minute they established that it was something he was wearing, I sort of figured that he was put in here to make me look like a big dope. <laughs> 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 there was something that I should know about. So. Uh, I would imagine it was Well, I'll uh, show you how much of a dope you were. He got only $10 for this <laughs> mighty effort that he made. Ralph, many thanks Thank to you. you. And <laughs> lots of luck. Thank you, Gary. Right home. Ralph Kiner. Thank you. Remember now out there, my friends, if you have got a secret and you want to be on the show, or if you want tickets to come see our show, may we suggest that you write to I've Got a Secret, CBS TV, 485 Madison Avenue, New York 22, New York. By the way, out there, I'd like to pause just long enough in the festivities to remind you that your blood might very well save a soldier's life. But it takes nine donations, nine donations to save one life. So why don't you join up now? You can see why so many Americans are rolling up their sleeves and giving their blood so that our wounded may live. Why don't you do it and do it tomorrow? Call your local Red Cross. It'll make you feel good. Now, may we have our next contestant, please, on I've Got a Secret. How do you do, sir? <laughs> sir, will you tell us what uh, your name is and will you tell us what you do? My name is Thomas Devaney. I Thomas? work at the Charnevlin Hotel. Uh-huh. And something about your appearance has excited both the ladies on the panel. They, are, they, th they think they've got... Yeah. Oh, you like the tie, huh? Well, all right, maybe, maybe, he's, maybe he's wearing Melville Cooper's necktie. We'll find out later. <laughs> now, Mr. Devaney, if you will remind me of your secret, we will show it to the folks at home, huh? <laughs> and this really happened. Now, Paddle, to help you classify this secret, I will tell you that it starts with, with the word I, and it concerns the fact that he received something. All right, let's start off the questioning with young Mr. Bill Cullen. Uh, all righty. Uh, Thomas, this thing that you were received, were you, were you happy to receive it? Yes. Uh, were you proud uh, to receive it? I'm not too proud. Uh, <laughs> is it the kind of thing that many people might have received? No, did, you have, no. did, did you have to do something in order to receive this? Yes. Yes. Could you, uh, would it be that you had uh, to exhibit, uh, you had to risk your life? Uh, no. <laughs> exhibit great bravery or something like that? No. Does it have anything at all to do with the military? No. Thank your you. time is up, Mr. Cullen. It's just as well. I saw a rather blank look in your eyes. Ten dollars for Mr. Devaney and now Miss Meadows. Mr. Devaney, this thing that you received, did you receive it in whatever capacity you have at the Sherry Netherland Hotel? Yes, you received it as a result yes. of your, your position there. You did. There. Did you receive it from a guest at the hotel? Yes. Was the guest, is it somebody well known? Yes. Is the guest named in the secret? Yes. Yes. Uh, is the guest a man? Yes. Is the man a <laughs> I don't know what you're going to ask, but it's too late. $20 for Mr. Devaney and $60 to go, Mr. Melville Cooper. The guest, the, the man is a guest. The guest, the guest is a man, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I guess that. No, no, no. Uh, uh, we've all guessed that the man, the guest was a man. That's right, yeah. Uh, the, are, you, are you on the same show I'm on, Mr. Cooper? <laughs> <laughs> well, this, uh, this man you guessed. No, the, the, uh, the whole gist of the matter was the guest gave you a present. A present. <laughs> was a gift. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Something to remember him by. <laughs> Was it anything to do with wearing apparel? No. No. Was it jewelry in any, any shape or form? No. Your time is up, Mr. Ten Cooper. There's $30 dollars down and $50 to go. Miss Day. Was this gift money? Yes. Would it have been a tip? Yes. A tip from a famous man. Yes. And the man is mentioned. Is uh, the man in politics? No. Is he um, in the theater? Uh, but by, the th by the theater, you mean broad application? You mean, you mean in the entertainment? Yes, all right. There's $40 down, $40 to go. 
Panelists are our last go round, everybody's last chance, and I think Mr. Cullen and Miss Meadows both have an inkling. Well, it's Mr. Cullen's next turn. Uh, this tip that you received, was it a, a very large tip? No. Was it unusual? Well, may yeah. I interject here? I, uh, from past knowledge, it sounds fairly tremendous. Uh, <laughs> I hope you won't hate me when you find out what it is, but I think it's the only fair answer to say it was rather large. I have an idea. Uh, was it, uh, was it, was, was this tip, uh, from a man who was famous for tipping like Diamond Jim Brady or someone like that? <laughs> no, he's, I mean, it wouldn't have been, but I mean, someone, uh, was the person famous for not tipping? Do you have to say yes? Yes. Was he very famous for being very tight, this person? <laughs> yes. Did you receive a tip from our producers? Uh, <laughs> I expect that laugh in, place, in, in, in the place of your salary. Yeah. Please, you know. I went down honorably anyway. Uh, this, this person who gave you... <laughs> That's our producer. <laughs> That's our producer buzzing the buzzer. All right, $50, yeah. down and 30 to go, and I'm sure Jane Meadows has... Mr. Devani, is this man by any chance a radio comedian, a movie comedian, television comedian? Yes. Is he Jack Benny? And he's Jack Benny. That is only part of the gentleman's secret. Is it he... the amount of money I want? The amount of money must be established, too. Is the amount over a dollar? Yes. It is over a dollar? Yes. Is it over five dollars? Yes. Is it over ten dollars? No. Is it ten dollars? It is yes. ten dollars. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Devaney. That sounded, that's why I said it was a large amount. <laughs> All right, now may we have our next panelist, please? Will this young lady come out here, please? Hello. Hello. Isn't she a delightful looking person? Your name is Mrs. Back. Mrs. Back. Now, Mrs. Back, will you remind me of your secret at the same time we will let our home audience in on the secret? Tell me what it is. Anybody recognize her? All right. To help classify this secret, I will tell you it starts with the word I and concerns and experience that Mrs. Back had, and we will start the questioning with Miss Jane Meadows. Mrs. Back, this experience that you had, did you have it recently, within the last five years? Yes. You did? Does this uh, experience involve another human being, or did you have it alone? Another human being. Another human being. Is this human being by any chance famous? No. No? Is this human being a member of your family? Yes. He is <laughs> Well, I, I, I would say, she says no, I, I say yes. <laughs> he definitely is. He is related, he is related to Mrs. Pack. Yes. He's related to you, but not a blood relative? That's no. right. Is it uh, your husband? Yes. yes. I'm sorry, Miss Meadows, our time is up. There is $10 for you and $70 to go. Mr. Cooper. <coughs> Some experience you had with your husband, Mrs. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, here we go, here we go. Well, as a matter of fact, here we don't go, Mr. Cooper, oh. because I look at the clock and find that we're all out of time. Paid by the bill. What so we're going to have to forfeit the entire amount to Mrs. Back. $80 for Mrs. Back. And will you tell the panel what your secret is? I was married on television. Oh, indeed she was. <laughs> Turns out about five weeks ago, she was married. Five weeks and four days, she was married on the bride and groom show. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for our guests and for their secrets tonight. Uh, in just a moment, I will tell you about the famous celebrity who will be third to greet by our panel next. She's real pretty, isn't she? She is indeed. Hey, next week at this time, our panel is going to do their best to discover the secret that is being kept by Paul Lucas, and there will be other interesting people here to challenge our panel. Meanwhile, until then, I'd better say goodnight to our panel, Mr. Bill Cullen, Miss Jane Meadows, Mr. Melville Cooper, and Miss Lorraine Day. And so until next week, when we all get together here on I've Got a Secret, this will be Gary Moore saying bye-bye for all of us. Be very kind to each other. Bye. <laughs>